All right. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar event. It is promptly 2 p.m. Eastern time here today. Uh, we're here to talk about custom account groups in Church Windows Accounting. We're going to be together for the next 20 minutes or so, maybe less, depending on the topic isn't terribly challenging. It might not go the full 20 minutes. Um, but we're here again to talk about accounting custom account groups. Before we get started on that topic, uh, well, first of all, hopefully everybody can hear me okay. Um, we are recording today's webinar event. Uh, the video will be produced and put on the support center of our website here at some point here in the next couple of weeks or so. Uh, I know we already have a, a webinar or video of a previous webinar on an earlier version of Church Windows that talks about the custom account groups. So if you're wanting to revisit this topic without waiting for this video of this version's um, webinar to be uh, put out there, you can go to the Church Windows Support Center. So if we go to churchwindows.com, not the church windows, and then into our Support Center, and it's going to load the page here. Um, then we're going to wait for it to load and jump down to our search box here. And we're going to type in custom and then click search. And it should come up uh, custom, oh, I'm sorry, not that one, custom account groups. It's probably further down the list. Uh, custom account groups, there we go. A little bit further up here. Uh, but right here, custom account groups, version 17 and newer. This was recorded on October 5th of 2016. But the functionality of the custom account groups function works and functions exactly the same. Screens might look a little different, but the, how it's set up, how they're used is exactly the same. So if you're wanting to revisit this again sooner, then by all means, you know, pay visit this video out on our website, on the Support Center. The topic for today is taken from our Accounting 201 workbook, pages 6 through 10. If you're interested in purchasing the workbooks, of course, you can go to our beginning menu here under our website and go to the training workbooks. You can find the entire uh, list of Church Windows training workbooks on that page at our website, and you can purchase them right from the from our shop right there. Okay, so that is what I'm using as the basis for the webinar event today is uh, pages six through ten in, in A201 that talks exclusively about accounting groups. So, um, if you have questions, please type those into the questions portion of the webinar control panel for me. I will try to get, keep an eye on those repeat those for everybody's benefit, and then um, try to get those questions answered. Please keep them on the topic at hand. Um, all right, so as the workbook explains on page six there, it says the custom account groups feature allows you to select specific accounts that you would like to see on reports and assign them to a name uh, of your choice. Or as I also like to sort of say is, you know, how I like to sort of, in terms of cementing it in your thinking, in terms of what custom account groups can do for you, is when you go to reports, and then custom account groups is everywhere in, in accounting reports, okay, whether it's the, you know, balance sheet or the transaction journal or general ledger or, you know, treasurer's report. So we're going to go to our treasurer's report, you know, and what I like to tell folks and ask them just sort of, again, to keep your get your thinking cap on it is, you know, when we go into our, say, treasurer's report, for example, there's nowhere here that I can see, you know, request a range of, say, income or expense accounts. You know, so it would be, you know, from expense account A to, you know, expense account, you know, Z. So, or income account A or an income through an, a range of expense accounts. There's also no way place for me to select a just random accounts on the treasurer's report or any reports for that matter, okay? The only thing I can limit my say treasurer's report is to say by fund. So if I otherwise, it's going to win the treasurer's report without limiting it to either a fund or a custom account group is going to bring in all of my income and expenses that are linked or showing that are that are set up on my chart of accounts regardless. And so sometimes we don't want that. Well, sometimes like for committees, we want to be able to create a a, a report of just select or specific accounts for say a committee or a group of folks just to show them their accounts okay nothing more nothing less okay and so the way to do that is to utilize this feature use that fe this feature called custom account groups okay and as the 
bullet points on page seven sort of indicate when might you want to set up and use a custom account group. You've got a specific group of people that are meeting to discuss the progress of some specific accounts or a particular project, okay? They don't need to see all the accounts on the treasurer's report or on the, you know, other accounts within those account types. They just want to see some accounts, okay? Or you want to shorten the list of the accounts that you're seeing on your chart of accounts, okay? Or maybe you're just wanting to report on some specific account, the transactions that are post posted to specific or select accounts only under, say, something like browse transactions. There certainly are a number of uses for the custom account groups, okay? And as we notice here, like on our treasurer's report, we do have a tab called a custom account groups, okay? So when we click on that tab, this is just one way to get to this. It brings me to my custom account groups. So if I go to right down here at the bottom and click the add custom account group button, it will open my custom account group screen, okay? Well, I don't have to go to a report in order to be able to access that window. So if I close out of my chart of my treasurer's report and I go up to say manage accounts, notice here in the upper left hand corner, let me get my highlighter, I've got a button right here called custom groups, right there, okay? So when I then click on that custom account groups button, now it opens my custom account groups screen, okay? So then that's what we're getting to at the bottom of page seven, is we're at our, well, at the top it shows this window here, um, but then, you know, when I collapse all, it parallels the screenshot that shows at the top of page seven. But, you know, so we, what we've got here is we've got all of our accounts in our entire chart of accounts listed here on the right here on the left-hand side. And over here, I've got my account groups, okay? There's nothing there because I haven't selected anything from the list, okay? So if we click the down arrow, we see the two custom account groups that we've already created in our data here. But we want to create a new one or add a new one. So what we're going to do is we're going to click the plus sign right there. Notice the floating help message says add a group. So when we click on that, it opens up our, our enter a group name and allows us to enter a new uh, group account, custom account group name. So we're going to call this office expenses per the screenshot there. And then we're going to click OK. All right. So now it does show here under our account groups, it shows our office expenses right there. OK. So then now the find, so I've added the group name. All right. So that's set up. So now what I need to do is I need to move over to my account list here on the left hand side and I need to find all of the expense accounts as they relate to my office expenses. So I think probably I could search certainly you know so I can go up here you know up at the top left and you know I can type in specific names so like right here this is a search box that's what I like to tell folks. So if I kind of collapse everything down and I click where it says total assets or click the X here to clear that out and if I type in, say here, financial, there's my financial secretary, salary and benefits. You know, so if I consider that part of my office expenses, which certainly could be, you know, if it's part of there, you know, we would add that. So now notice here, we notice that this is a ledger. Okay, so how I know that is because there's an account number and when I click the plus sign, there's at least one sub account below it. Okay, um, so if I now choose you know, financial secretary salary, and I click the right facing arrow to move it over there, it's going to pop up and give me a message that says, hey, when adding a sub ledger, you must add the entire ledger. Would you like to add the financial secretary salary and benefits to the ledger? And of course, I'm going to want to say yes to that. Okay. So I add that, that account or that ledger with the sub account shows up on the right hand side. Okay. So I would just now continue to you know, add more accounts. So we're going to do church, administrator, salary, and benefits. Again, it's a ledger. When I click add, it adds the entire ledger, assuming I choose that. Um, you know, maybe we're going to clear out and we're going to put in admin, church administrator, salary, and benefits. Those are all considered part of our office expenses. Oh, it's already there. Sorry. Um, so I've got what? Financial secretary, church administrator, salary, and benefits. Uh, do I have one for receptionist? No, I don't, I don't think. Oh, I do. Uh, no, I don't. 
there it is right here, 510280. So there I go, I add that one. So I'm just continuing to add a group of accounts to the list, okay? So, you know, and there's maybe some other miscellaneous just true office expenses. So maybe here's my office expense. Once I highlight that, you know what? I can highlight it and we notice down here at the bottom it says hold shift or control to select multiple items. So if I go, oh, well, rather than searching each one of those accounts, I'm going to, you know, I'm basically going to add all of these. So I can either hold down my control key and randomly select them, or I can highlight one, hold down my shift key and select a block and then add, add them all. So a nice, quick, and easy way for us to add multiple accounts. And I can do that all over the place if I want. Okay? So let's assume at this point now then that I've now created this office expense group. I have no other accounts I need to add to it. Okay? This group now is set. It's going to bring in these accounts and exclusively these accounts on every report that I choose to run them where they're applicable. The only reason why I might need to revisit this custom account group again would be as if I either needed to take accounts away from it or add accounts to it or if I just simply wanted to delete the group in its entirety. Okay. Otherwise this group appears here in perpetuity for me to choose and use over and over and over again forever until I decide I don't want to anymore or until it needs to change. Okay. So now I've created the group, I'm happy with it. Now I would do something like go to my reports and now we're talking about how we use the, fin the custom account groups. So if we go to say financial and back to our say treasures report, here I would make my selection for the period. Let me backdate it to some, some time period where I know I've got some data here. I would choose the period. I would visit my custom account groups and now notice we've got one here that we can check on the left called office expenses right there. Okay, so then I would put a check mark next to office expense. And then when I click on, we're going to make sure that we're including accounts with zero balances too, because I don't know if they all have activity. And then I click print. Yeah, I might want to pay a visit to the columns tab to revisit those columns. But now when it generates our treasurer's report, we now notice that it only and exclusively brings in just those expense accounts that I had created as part of the custom group. None of the others, no income accounts no other expenses, just those office expense accounts that I've added to that particular custom group. Yeah, and I could just, I can pick and choose and bring in accounts from all over the place, okay? So, you know, if I go to, you know, say something like, you know, if I go to my balance sheet, they won't appear because none of these expenses, none of the expenses show on our balance sheet. But if I go to something like, uh, say, the list chart of accounts, same thing, got a custom account groups tab here. I could choose office expense. Again, including accounts with zero balance, and then click print. It will just show those same accounts. There they are. Okay? So when you're wanting reports to just include certain specific or random or ranges of accounts, not all of them, the only best and only way to do that is to set up and use this feature called custom account groups. Okay? Very, very handy feature. Again, you build them once and they're there for you to reuse again and again and again. They can always be changed or edited or added to or taken away from or deleted, but it's you set them up once and they're there forever to use. Okay? So as indicated, the topic wasn't terribly long, um, so we're going to, uh, that's the end of what uh, I'm discussing here. Let me see what questions we've got here. Does the total fund balances include their income and expense accounts as well? That's a great question, Victoria. No, it does not. Total fund balances exclusively just reports on those specific funds, not the associated income and expenses. If I wanted to create a custom group for that, I would have to add not only the funds, but then the associated income and expense accounts. Good question. Another question, is this how I would get a treasurer's report to exclude accounts that have been marked as inactive? Yes, Barbara, that's exactly right. Inactivating accounts, you know, so when we go to our manage accounts, and we, you know, click on specific accounts down here. Uh, let me find something here just as an example. Yeah, so over here we've got on our detail tab the box labeled inactive. So inactive only means we don't want to post anything further to our this particular account or to an account. So it doesn't show in our transaction screens, but it does not omit the accounts from reports. Okay, 
So yes, if you're wanting to omit inactive accounts from reports, you would want to create a custom account group that includes all the accounts that are active and omitting those that are not. Okay. Uh, okay, so another question, how do you delete a custom account group? Great question. So we would go back to our manage accounts and custom groups. You would choose the custom account group from the menu at the top right here. Once it's there, we simply go to steer our focus to the right hand end and see that little minus sign. We click on that right there and then it'll pop up and ask us, to, are you sure you want to delete this group? It should. Yep. Are you sure you'd like to delete this group? Once we click yes, the group is gone. Good question. So yes, let me say no to that one. I'm going to choose another one. Let's say choose our mission group giving. There we go. So there it is. Highlight it. Click delete. It says yes. Now my mission giving group is gone. What controls the totals when the custom group is run? Hmm, I'm not sure, Bruce, I'm understanding the question. I mean, it should only be bringing in the accounts that are included in your totals. Uh, so if we go to something like our treasurer's report uh, and we go to our custom account groups and choose our office expenses, both the period activity year-to-date balance should be only including the accounts that are in those particular, that are the totals that are posted in those accounts. Um, yeah, yeah, that, sorry, that's, I'm sorry, I'm not, uh, that, that question's, yeah, it should be, it should be bringing in only the totals for the, either the budget or the period activity or the actuals or year-to-date balance for just those accounts. Shouldn't be bringing in anything else. Yeah. And it appears like it is, you know, when we look at things like budget year-to-date, it looks like if we total these up, that would be our 49,984 under our budget year to date. So it looks like it does go across, it does, does, does total across. Um, yeah, now the difference line here normally is typically what calculates the difference between income and expenses. So of course, that's a calculated field based on income and expenses. And so when there's no income, of course, it is going to show as a negative or deficit amount. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. Good question. All right, I'm not seeing any other questions coming in. Um, yeah, and Bruce, that would occur for all of them. So whether you're running it for your list chart of accounts reports, and it should still bring in all the subtotals and everything on that. Sorry, I wanted to conclude with that. Um, the uh, That's all where we're going to conclude things, folks. So again, it looks like we're right about 20 minutes after. So if you have questions, please contact our technical support staff might want to visit that video on the website. We hope it's been helpful. I'll go ahead and then the webinar for everybody. Um, if you have questions, please let us know, and we hope to see everyone at another Church Windows webinar event. All right. Have a good day, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.